Hi everyone, I'm Philip. So let's see what is this observability thing and what you can do about it. Um, so I'm Philip. I work for Elastic as a developer advocate. So I don't really work. I mostly travel around. Like Israel in December is very nice, so that's why I came over. Um, so you probably have seen some of our products, and where most of you started with us probably are logs, right? Who is using logs? I guess everybody is centralizing some logs. Um, so generally, you print every time something happens. And the thing about logs is they give you a lot of information, but they're normally on a component level. So they don't give you a total overview, especially if you have something like microservices. You don't really see the full picture. You just see what happens at what point in the application, which gives you a lot of information, but is not good for the general overview. So you want to have more. Um, the next thing that many people probably have are metrics, right? Who is collecting metrics for an application? Yeah, that's also a lot. Um, so basically, this is a periodic thing. You just collect one or multiple values at multiple points in time. The nice thing about them is, you can aggregate them together later on, and they're pretty cheap to collect. Whereas logs can be pretty verbose and are a lot of information, whereas metrics can be very compact. The thing is, they lack a lot of context, and you don't see the overall picture. And depending on how you see your data, you might miss outliers, or you don't if you collect them correctly. The final thing to make that picture more complete is probably you want to have APM or tracing. Um, which give you on a per request level information, which are even more verbose than logs, and they cover more context, uh, but you need to instrument your application, so you probably need some agent in your application to collect those. And then you throw all of these things together, and you end up as this thing that is called observability. And this is what everybody wants to do nowadays, right? And then often the question is, so what is this observability thing? And I guess most of you have probably seen this one before, right? And then people will refer to this as the three pillars of observability or whatever. And so you throw in, uh, you have the logs that you probably all have been doing, and then you have the metrics where you have the numbers to get an overview of what, how your system is behaving, for example. And then you have the request tracing where you see this was a slow request or this request had an error. And you see the actual context for one specific user interaction. And you combine everything and then this is observability, right? Maybe, maybe not, we'll see. Um, so where does this term even come from? So it's generally, um, or let's say, why not? Like, this is a bit like saying gasoline, motor oil, and tires, those are the three pillars of Formula One. This is kind of not totally false, but this is a similar context where you have like saying logs, metrics, and traces are what makes observability, which is not really the thing itself. It's not really the essence. The essence is more like, where does observability come from? Um, and we've generally seen this one before. So you have a lot of tools, and people just want to have tools, right? Or especially vendors want to sell you tools. So since we're at DevOps days, who's seen something like this? DevOps is just about the tools, right? You don't care about the process or the people or anything, it's just tools. Like, um, it's not about the specific tools here, it's just like tool after tool after tool. Um, and then you end up like this again. Um, we all know this one. Um, and then you end up things like you have a DevOps tool. And by the way, if you call yourself DevOps, it's much better paid than just ops. So always call yourself DevOps. And then you end up again with DevOps jobs and maybe even DevOps teams, which I don't think makes much sense, but that's where you end up. And then everybody follows along and says like, well, we should do that DevOps thing. And Coming back to observability, people then, especially in management, say, like, we should do that observability thing, right? Um, I'll buy myself some observability. And so what really is observability? Where it's coming from uh, is the control theory. Um, basically, you want to infer the state of a system just by monitoring it from the outside. So you want to see what is going on inside just from the outside. And that leaves us with these this matrix of the known knowns and unknowns. Probably you have seen this one as well. So there are things that we are aware of and that we understand. What is that, for example? That would be, for example, dashboards. Like, we know how our system behaves and we know where the problems are. This is often a bit like scar tissue. We know this has gone wrong in the past, so we build a dashboard to monitor that it's not going wrong anymore. But that's not the full picture. Then you have things we are not aware of, but we generally understand. Any ideas what that could be? 
Those are some metrics where you, for example, throw on some anomaly detection because you know this might be interesting. I'm not sure what might happen in the future and where the outliers might be, but I know this is something probably to watch out for. Then things we are not aware uh, of, but uh, sorry, we are aware of but do not understand. That is where logs would come into play, for example. You don't really know what is happening here, but you know there might be some things in that area. So you collect a lot of logs, you basically over-collect on information that you can later on go back basically to figure out what was happening here to kind of create the full picture. And then there are things we are not aware of and do not understand. And that is basically where observability comes into play. Like the look into the future and things that we would want to have after the fact to figure out what has gone wrong. And another way to look a bit at this is, I'm not sure if anybody knows that, the survivor buyers. Um, this is, in the Second World War, the British basically looked at their planes after coming back uh, from uh, doing a raid over, uh, uh, doing a raid, um, and they would count the bullet holes, where are the bullet holes? And then the initial idea that everybody has is like, well, let's reinforce where the bullet holes are, right? But then people figured out like, well, actually, what we're interested in are the planes that are not coming back. So the bullet holes from the planes that don't come back, those are the actual important ones. And this is pretty much, I don't want to say like your, your systems are a bit like this. Um, they are, okay, maybe. Um, you said that. Um, but sometimes your systems are a bit like that, like they, they don't come back anymore. And then you want to know where are basically the bullet holes you don't see anymore. And that's the entire idea of observability. You want to see kind of like things you have not watched out for or prepared for. And generally is, what is the status of my system? What is not working? And especially why is it not working anymore? So what you want to do is, you want to have some instrumentation without shipping new code. Like adding more log statements and redeploying your application to figure out the pro problem often doesn't work because then the problem doesn't appear anymore. Um, so you want to have the insight right in the running system. Um, and just as a side note, not all signals that you could be collecting are equal. So some stuff that you and your users probably care about is, can people log in? Can they do a successful transaction? Can they give you money? Um, can they do a search in a certain uh, response time? Can they put something in a shopping cart and is the shopping cart uh, consistent? What your users don't really care about, like if an API is slower or not, probably the users don't see or care. Elevated error rates, as long as users are not affected and if you have like built-in retries, why would a user care? Or just the database query latency, if that doesn't affect the user, they don't really care. So. I guess everybody is aware of the SLIs, SLOs, and SLAs. Um, so the indicators are, uptime is, for example, something that your users probably care about. Um, objectives are, you guarantee your people or the uptime for your service to be like 99%. And then you have the agreement where basically um, you guarantee to somebody that if your uptime is below that objective, you owe them money. And that's how you get stable systems, both internally in your company, but also um, to guarantee to outsiders. And this is really something that you want to get with observability to see like what is happening if you're not hitting those and getting to those. So you cannot buy observability, but you need to kind of build it in and to build more observable systems. So observability is not a product that you buy, but it's an attribute of the system that you want to have. And just to give you one example is, it's not a tool that you buy. For example, your logs might look something like this today. Maybe you have something like this. So I failed to log in with whatever password here. And this is some nice piece of information, but this is not a very complete picture. What you want to have is to make your system give you better insights. You want to make kind of like from regular logs to more event-like structures, which give you much more context. So here, this will, of course, in the context of logs, require work from me. But here I'm saying, for example, what kind of event was it? So somebody tried to log in, and it was a login failure. And this was the specific user. And this was where the request was coming from, and this was maybe the URL. And with that information, you can extract much more value out of that. For example, from this statement here, I need a human to actually read that and interpret what is going on. From this one here, I have the write event type, and then I can say, ah, okay, so somebody's trying to brute force my user account, and then I might lock the user account. Or you can see somebody's failing to log in, or your login is failing in total. Like, this is a much richer structure to show you what is happening in your system. 
Um, and that is also why you probably want to go a bit beyond just like logs, metrics, and traces, because there are many other systems that you will care about to actually see what is going on. So for example, you could have health checks to see what is happening, or even synthetic health checks. Synthetic health checks are like, rather than waiting for a user to do something and have them fail, you have an automated probe that basically tries out what would a user do to see if that would fail, and then you know, okay, there is a problem, Luckily, no user has been affected yet, but I found the problem before somebody has been affected. Or, for example, security is also something that is coming into this whole observability topic because that's also part of the overall health and behavior of your system. Um, and as always, the goal is the business value. So it's not just about, like, we have 100% uptime. If nobody cares about the uptime, you want to have business value for making you a successful company. So to kind of wrap up... Um, Monitoring is still a thing. Monitoring is the thing where you know if the system is not working. So you actively monitor. Also monitoring is like, it's a verb. So you do something actively to see if your system is working. Observability is a noun, and this is more like an attribute of the entire system, and this is why you, something is not working. And it's a much bigger picture and trying to answer these questions that you haven't seen before or haven't been able to answer before. Um, repeat after me. Neither can you buy DevOps nor observability, though I can totally sell them to you. Um, this is what every tool provider does. Um, and that's pretty much it. If you want to have like a more concrete tool-driven thing, come to our booth. Um, we'll save that for there. Are there any general questions now? I think we have like a couple left. Um, okay, Tomer, behave. <laughs> uh, less than a question, more of a comment. Uh, you did bring it up to your quality in the context of the system not working. And so quality is a property of a system that matters all the time. The system is observable to tell what it's doing. It doesn't matter if it's broken or not, right? Everything is broken. All the time. I mean, it's something you design for at the system level, and it's not a... It's not something that is a operational failure of version that you're handling. It's an architectural choice. It's a design decision. That's very true, also because otherwise you will never be able to know like what is broken and what is not broken. It's just like knowing your system. That's probably a good way to put it, that to know your system and what is going on. Also, by the way, um, before you all run off, I normally try to take a picture with you um, so I can prove to my colleagues that I've been working today. You know, we're a fully distributed company. Um, today, people know where I am, but sometimes they don't. Can you all wave? Wave, wave. Thank you. Um, yeah, office hours. Find me afterwards. Thanks a lot.